meeting is being recorded. Okay. So guys, when you take the reference field, when you take the reference field, all the data that you see here is already there in the database. So the data that you see here is already stored in the database. Okay, whatever the reference field you take. So the caller reference field, configuration item, and the assignment group, assign to, all these are actually stored in the database. Okay, this is actually stored in the database. So this is also the data that you are seeing, the data that you are seeing here is also stored, stored in the database. Okay. Okay. See, all these details are stored in database. So this is actually group table. These are actually stored in the database, right? Okay. Fine. Here, I am actually creating, I am actually creating few fields here on the form. Okay. Go to configure form layout. So here I'm actually creating first name. Okay. Last name. Email. Department I'm actually giving, uh, I'm actually providing here. So these four fields So first name, last name, email department. So these four fields guys, whenever I select the caller here, okay, this caller four fields like caller first name should be populated here, caller last name should be populated here, caller email should be populated here, caller department should be populated here. So suppose if I select able tutor here, if I select able tutor here, Let us say if I select a Rubin here, so Rubin first name, Rubin last name, Rubin email, Rubin department. So let, let us say if I select any other user, if I select any user, so I'm selecting Rabek. So Rabek first name, last name, email department should be automatically populated here. So guys, here you guys can see, we are actually selecting the details which are actually already in the database. Here we are actually selecting the records which are already in the database. So here, if you want to get the details of these records, you will have to make a database query. You will have to data. You will have to make a database query. Definitely, you will have to query the database to get the details of this particular user. Okay. So here. What what can we do here in this case? So we are actually changing something in the something here in this color field, right? So then in this case, we'll have to write on change line script. Here we will have to write on change line script. So whenever we get the reference field value, do we get the CCD or do we get the display value? So for reference fields, we want we will always get the CCD. So we will get this color CCD, right? Using this CCD, we will actually make a query in the user table. Using this CCD, you will actually make a query in the user table. So after querying the user table, using this CCD, you will actually get the first name, last name, email department. And that first name, last name, email department, you will actually show it here. Okay, 
So try to understand that uh, details clearly. So here in this uh, reference field, you are actually selecting already created records. The records which are already there in the database, those records you are actually selecting here. So that particular record details, you want to show it here, like a first name, last name, email department. Yeah, but can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, is there is there uh, yeah, something called the standard table and something called custom table? I didn't get you. Yeah, you for example, user table, sometimes they call uh, some other table, they call it consumer table. How do we differentiate between a user table and a consumer table, for example, or a customer table? User table and? A consumer or customer table, for example. Custom table. Yeah, customer or consumer table. Yeah, see, hmm. as we have already discussed, if the table name is actually starting with U underscore, that is actually custom table. Ah. Okay. Ah, I so see. here, see here, when I click on this magnifying glass, here I'm actually ah. referencing user table here. Okay. So here, what you do, you will actually get the CCID, right? By getting this CCID, you will actually make a query on the user table and you will get the first name, last name, email department. Okay, guys, okay. please keep your focus here. Uh -huh. So you will actually select the user here. So whenever you get the value of this caller, this particular record CCID you will actually get. Using that CCID, you will actually query query the user table. So then you will actually get this record, this user record. From that user record, you will actually get first name, last name, email department. So guys, so you guys are able to understand the requirement. What is my requirement? You, here you are able to understand, right? When so you is... Pat, go ahead. Yeah, so the sys ID will point to a specific row in the table, correct? Sys ID will actually point. Sys ID is actually the unique, unique uh, uh, value for every record. Okay. Sys ID will actually, Sys ID is actually the unique value for every record. Okay. Okay. So, so here, let me just show you. Let me just first create one client script here. So guys, if you try to understand each and every step, it will make your life easy now. Okay, now I am going to create a client script on which field? Color field. So I am going to write on, I am going to write on change client script. So on which field? On the caller, caller field. So you are actually selecting caller field here. Yeah. So here, you get caller details. Okay. So I am actually making an alert here. So the new value, whatever I'm actually getting the new value, right? That new value I'm actually providing here. So guys, now, Did I create this one? Yes. I am going to refresh this one now. See, what is it giving? CCID. This CCID is actually, the CCID is, is actually the system record CCID, system administrator record CCID. See here, if I open this record here, See, in the CCID that you are seeing here, 
the the same that you are seeing here both are same or not yeah. both are same or not right so here what are you doing is you are actually getting the system administrator sysid using that sysid what you do is you will actually let me just do one thing you will actually query the user table so here using that sysid what you do you will actually query like sysid see here he is the one so from this record we will actually get we will actually get first name last name so what where are this first name last name so you will actually get first name last name system administrator system administrator there is one department field as well so you will actually get those details okay by querying so here you are writing on change client script you are actually getting the sysid okay till here you guys are good right yes sir so so guys here you guys have to understand one thing here there is an another api there is an another api that is actually glide record api which is actually from server side there is an api which is actually glide record this glide record is actually used to do crowd operations this glide record is actually is used to do crowd operations what are crowd operations create update delete read create update delete read the records so this glide record is actually used to do crowd operations cloud create, cloud update. in the sense sorry the cloud cloud in the sense bulk operations yani for for many people at once what what does it mean cloud here crowd means right c r u d ah c r u d crude you mean yeah. so you you can correct as crude root in the sense okay. c for create r for read u for update d for delete ah oh, okay so glide record is used to crude operations okay so using glide record you can actually create major issue record you can actually update major issue record you can actually read the values from major issue record you can actually delete the major issue records using glide record api okay so far what are we doing here so let us say consider major issue record so you can open major issue form like this one you can actually create major record from user interface you can update the record from the major interface major issue from user interface you can read the record from the uh, from the user interface you can delete the record from the user interface but if you want to create a record from the script if you want to create a major major issue record from the script you will use glide record if you want to update the record from the script you will use glide record if you want to delete the record from the script you will use glide record if you want to read the record from the if you want to read the record from the from the database you will actually use glide record okay so now i will actually explain how to read the records using glide record okay now i will actually explain how glide record is used to query the records okay so now i am actually opening background scripts so 
put his background strip is guys so this is this is the place we will actually use to run the scripts in scripts in the background okay so now i am actually declaring a variable first bar i am declaring a variable with my name so glide record gr uday so it can be you can declare the variable name whatever equal to so you will actually initialize glide record using new keyword new glide record in this glide record so which table you want to query so suppose if you want to query incident table you will actually provide incident name here if you want to query problem table you will actually provide problem table there if you want to query user table you will actually query user table there so i am actually okay, querying user table I have a question here. Here, the thing will open in the in the server side. The script will run in the server side, correct? Yes, yes. This so, in which it. scenario I will need to run it in server side, and in which scenario I will need to run it in client side? Yani, what is the visualization here? The the situation. Yeah, just um, just uh, I'll actually explain this thing in 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 a minute. Okay. Okay. So here, if you want to query the table, whatever the table that you want to query, you will actually specify the table here. So here in this case, I want to query user table. Okay. So here, gr uday dot add query. So you are actually querying the query here. You are actually adding the query here. So what you are actually querying that using sysid. So you know the sysid of the record. Okay. You know the sysid of this record. Six underscore ID, comma. So what is the CID here? This is the CID. Okay. Here, what you do is variable dot. So you will actually query here dot query. Okay. So if a record exists in the table with the CID, so here I am actually checking in the if condition. If there is any record existing in that uh, table with the CID, so this line will actually return true. If this is return true, what we do is we will actually get the values. Okay, so this record values we will actually get. So GS dot print I am actually using it for printing the records. Okay. So here, gr uday dot first name. This first name is actually from user table. First name. So here it is actually last name. Here it is actually email. So here it is actually department. Okay. <clears throat> so gs dot print is actually print the value on the console. So now once I run this one, I will actually get the current login user, first name, last name, email, and uh, the department CCD. Okay. So I don't want the CCD. I want the display value dot. Get display value. Okay. See here. So current login user, first name, last name, email, and department. So now what am I going to do is I am going to take the script out. Okay. So now I am actually going to my client script here. Okay. I am actually pasting out here. So here, in place of the CCD, I am actually making this as dynamic. How am I making dynamic here? I am actually selecting this new value. I am actually pasting it here. Okay. So every time, whenever you select the color, right? Suppose if you have selected the color, color as able tutor, able tutor record CCD will come here. 
So in this glide record, you will actually query with the able able total record CSD. You will get able total first name, last name, email department. Suppose if you have selected Abraham Lincoln, so the so you will actually query with the Abraham Lincoln CSD. You will get the Abraham Lincoln first name, last name, email department. If you have selected Alisa, Alisa CSD will come here. You will actually query with user table with Alisa CSD. You will get the first name, last name, email department here. So here, this GS dot print we are we should not write here. Okay. Uh, excuse me, but line five and line six, I am not able to understand. Line five and six. Line five is used to make the query. Yeah, to make the query for traverse the whole table, all the rows in the table, or what? This is actually used to make a query on the user table. See, let me give you a better example, Fat. This is actually the user table. This is actually the user table. Okay. So first line will actually open the user table. Yeah, I know you created an object and you throw the table in that object. I, I, yeah, yeah. I understand that. I'm telling you. So in the second yeah. line, you are actually keeping the condition like CCD. CCD, you are actually keeping here something like CCD. There is that user record CCD. You are giving the value that you want to search all the rows by, correct? Yeah, I'm actually copying the CCD here, system admin CCD here. That CCD you are actually giving here. So after that, this is actually add add query. So here, here if you see, so you are actually adding query, right? Here you have done add query. You 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 are actually clicking on run, right? So this yeah. is like, this is like query. You are ah, able to execute, the execute the query. Yeah, execute we can say. So ah. this is the correct terminology you have used. This will actually, this line will actually execute. What about six? Sixth line will actually check after the query, if any record exists or not. If After any record query, with with the sys ID with the sys ID provided, correct? Yes, yes you, you are right. Ah, okay. So here, here, how can you set the value on the form? How can you set the value on the form? So using glide form, you will actually set the field right, field value right. Yeah. Yeah. So g underscore form dot set value the field name is actually you underscore first name so this one we had actually created do you guys remember yeah. so this first name i am actually keeping here okay So now what's the difference here? You are setting the value of each of the four fields to the new value brought from the database, correct? Yes, you got it right. Yeah. What about the previous one? The previous one when it was GRUD only without uh, G underscore form. Which one? The previous situation, it was, uh, it was without G underscore form, it was G R U D dot first name dot last name. What it will do? The previous situation. G S data. No, no. Uh, it was G R U D dot. Uh... Yeah, this is variable name. 
this variable name can be what about so i mean before you added this four into g underscore form it was doing what the previous situation so earlier uh, before g underscore form dot there was gs dot uh, print something like that there was right you're asking about that no no i am asking about now you put you put grud dot first name and grud dot last name and grud dot email you put it in this new expression now before before when it was not in this expression when it was alone what it was it was doing in the output what's the difference yeah that is what i am actually telling you for that was used for printing the value on the console just the printing yeah that was actually to print the value on the console that i that i had used here what i'm actually doing i'm actually setting the value on the form right that is why i'm ah. actually using g underscore form dot set value ah okay okay so here if i refresh this one So I have actually added the fields on the issue issue table. Looks like. I did like clients with an issue table only. So guys, here the values are not getting populated on the form load. Here the values are not getting populated on the form load. Can we make on change clients script working in the on load? Yes. So how can we do that? We can actually. We did already remove that one, right? So here in this case, new value is not working. G underscore form dot get value. So what is the field name here? U underscore column. Okay, this function is actually not working in the client side. This function is not working in the client side. So let me just comment it out. See here, the first name, last name, email got automatically populated. So now I am going to select Abraham Lincoln here. So Abraham Lincoln is there in my instance. Suppose I'm actually selecting Roger. So Roger first name, Roger last name, Roger email address automatically got populated. Okay. If I select any other user here, so path is path there in my instance. is not there in my I'm actually selecting Steve here. Steve, first name, last name, email address got automatically populated. Okay. So what I had done, guys, tell me, I had written on change client script. On the on change client script, when I get the value of this caller, I'm actually getting the sysid. Using the using that sysid, I am actually querying the user table using client record. I have got the first name, last name, and our email address. So that email address I'm actually setting in the field values using g underscore form dot set value. That is what I had done. Do you guys understand? Yeah, but this is run in the server side now, correct? So it is actually making a server call and getting the details from the database. Yes, you're right. Can we do it in the client side? Yani, what is the visualization here? Which script that I will need to run in the server side and which script I will need to run in the client side and how to visualize the criteria for that, to differentiate the criteria for that? 
so which side will actually uh, client side which way which side is required uh, server side scripting is what the question right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so when you are actually dealing with the reference fields okay so you will have to deal with the database you will have to deal with the server side scripting ah okay okay understand understand yeah so when you are actually dealing with the list fields this is also like reference field ah. you will have to deal with the database server side ah see yesterday also i told the same thing for yeah yeah but what about client in which other scenario i will use client so so let us say if you are actually uh, making the field mandatory read only or um, you know you don't need any database uh, you, you don't query. want to do any database query uh ah. you don't want to do any date validation then in that case you will do client side scripting understand any any what any field validation any date validation what do you mean date validation date validation in the sense so is there any date field on the form no ha huh? ah um, date and time because in date and time it's brought from server i understand okay you understand right yeah okay. it's not in the client okay. yeah so using this using glide record you can actually get the values from the database and you can actually place it in the form ah logical now i understand it seems good okay now what am i doing is i am actually taking it off control x so my, my client is telling that my client is telling that so when you use glide record in the client side when you use glide record in the client side it is taking too much time the form is getting freezed and you don't use glide record in the client side you will actually tell that so what you would do is you will actually immediately create a script include okay so you guys can ask me what is script include so script include is actually a script repository you will actually store all the script there and you can call that script every time when you want script include is actually a script repository where you can store the scripting there and you can call that script every time when you want it is like a go down you will actually keep all your goods in the go down as in when you want you will actually get the goods okay so here similar i'm actually creating yeah. similar to cache so you are actually creating a script include here the script include is like i'm actually keeping get Caller, caller values. I'm actually keeping. So guys, here you have to definitely check this checkbox, client callable checkbox. Only then you can actually call this script include in the client side, or else it will actually work in the server side. So when you check this checkbox, it will actually extend a class called abstract AJAX processor. it will actually extend a class called ajax abstract processor if it is not extending this class you cannot actually call this script include in the client side so that is why i am actually checking this checkbox and then here what am i doing is i am actually creating a function okay caller values okay i am actually creating a function here okay so here in this function i'm actually keeping this script in this script include in this script include this script include works server side you have to definitely remember this point script include is actually server side script okay yeah yeah it is so run it is run in the server but i can call it from the client and user correct? yes yes you are right okay. in the server side script the glide form will not work see this glide form will not actually work in the server side so you will have to remove this one so this g underscore form set value these things also will not work in the server side ah okay okay it was designed for to run in the client side not in the server side okay 
okay so here you have actually defined you have actually created a script include inside the script include you have actually created a function okay so for the time being i am actually setting x y z here okay so guys here what am i doing is i am actually using return statement return statement is actually return statement is actually the one which will actually pass the output return statement is actually the one which will actually pass the output so here first name plus i'm actually keeping star plus gr uday dot last name plus r plus dot email plus r gr uday dot department dot get display value so here guys remember you are actually passing this value first name star last name star email star department this value whenever you call this function whenever you call this function you will actually query the user table with this sid and you will actually pass first name star last name star email star department okay so here i am actually just saving this one okay so what am i doing here is i am actually calling this script include in the client side so how do i call this script include in the client side i will have to make ajax call so that ajax call you will actually define using var ga uday is equal to new glide ajax so in this glide ajax what i do is i will actually call the script include that i have created so this is the script include that i have created right i am actually calling this script include here in this glide ajax okay after that using this variable i am actually add query add param add param in this param i will have to call the function within the script include so here in the script include i have i have actually defined the function right this function i have to call if i have to call that function what i have to do here is i have to call that function using sysparam_name sys param_name name sys param underscore name comma the function name the function name here is actually caller values okay so here is the point that you guys have to remember inside the function right inside this function i will have to pass the caller sysid so inside this function right here in this function i'll have to pass the caller sysid whomever the caller you select here right whomever the caller you select right that caller sysid you will have to pass inside the function within the script include for that what you do is you will actually use add param sys param underscore caller sys you can actually keep whatever so sys param underscore caller sys i am actually keeping here what am i doing is i am actually getting the value of the caller using g underscore form dot get value so that is actually u underscore 
all are okay so guys within this function you are actually passing this caller cid you will actually get the caller caller cid when you get the value right so this cid you are actually passing it to function within this function so this cid you will actually store in this parameter this parameter here you will actually call using this dot get parameter parameter okay guys try to understand the things clearly okay now i am actually saving this one so here what am i doing is after that da uday dot get xml so when you use get xml inside this one you will have to make a callback function okay i am actually making call up details issue i am actually keeping the callback function like this one this callback function you will have to define here okay so here you will actually get a response so here what you do is where i am actually declaring another variable where answer is equal to this this object dot response dot response xml dot element dot okay i am actually just keeping an alert here alert answer okay just to save this one i am going to refresh this now okay and um, let me just refresh this again did we save this one So which spelling is wrong? Call ID is six seven six seven eight six seven eight. Which one? No, we don't have to worry about it.
I think this something is wrong with this one. I did not actually. See here, in the alert, we are actually getting the first name, last name, email address, and a department. So star separated. See, system star, administrator star, email star, department. Star separated. Okay. So here we are actually getting star separated. So why is it giving star separated? We are here actually we are giving star separated here. Okay, so let me just refresh this one. So whatever that I get right, so whatever that that I get right, so first one I'm actually I will pass it here. Second one I will pass it here, last name. The third one I will actually pass it to email. The fourth one I will pass it to department. So how do I do that? Okay, so what am I going to do here is in the client side. I'm actually removing this alert here now. So where split answer? So I'm actually splitting the answer. I'm actually splitting the answer using split functionality. I'm actually splitting the answer using split functionality. That is actually star. I'm splitting the answer. So whatever that comes first. I'll be setting the value into the first name. So G underscore form dot set value comma see here. So the split answer of zero. The first one, the first one, I'm actually passing it to first name. Okay. You underscore last underscore name. So it is like a matrix in which there is a zero, one, two, three index for the position in the index, matrix. It is actually the index. What? It is actually the index. But yeah, but index for a for a matrix uh, container or for a what? Uh, yani object for a what type of object? Object. It is actually array. Array. Okay. Oh, index for array. Okay. Okay. Now, let me just save this one. Okay. 
Now, if I refresh this one, guys. See, the caller first name is actually populated, last name populated, email department populated. I'm actually removing it to, I'm actually keeping someone else here now. See, Rubin, Rubin, Rubin details are populated here. If I select something else, Steve, Steve details are populated. Okay. So guys, here what am I doing is, because we, if we write a client record in the client side scripting, it is taking too much time. It is actually uh, causing some performance issues like it is taking much time and it is causing some performance issues. That is why ServiceNow is actually not recommending writing client record in the client side scripting. Then what am I doing here? I'm actually creating a script include inside the script include. I'm actually creating a function inside that function. I have actually written client record here. Inside this glide record, what am I doing is I'm actually querying with the CCD. If this CCD, this CCD, you are actually getting it from client side. This dot get parameter, color value. So this value here you have actually defined here. This is the one. Okay. So here, what are you doing here? You are actually calling the script include. Inside the script include, you are actually calling the function. Inside that function, you are actually passing this color CCD. And what are you doing is in turn, whatever this return value returns, first name, last name, email department, star separated first name, last name, email department. Those details I'm actually getting here in the client side. Okay. So the first one, the first index will go to the first name. Second index will go to the last name. Third index will go to the email. Fourth index will go to the department. I'm actually separated. I'm actually separating here using star. Does this make sense to you, everyone? This glide ajax concept, if you guys are practicing these things continuously, you will get used to it. I am going to give you a requirement here, guys. <clears throat> Whenever you select the configuration item here, okay, this configuration item will have assigned to person. So this, this configuration item has assigned to person. This assigned to person should be automatically populated here. This is the requirement that I'm actually giving it to you. You guys can come to uh, come to tomorrow session by completing this requirement. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. Father? Yeah, it's okay, but uh... You need it with the script include or which type of scripting? Sorry? You need it with the script include or with the client or with the server side scripting or client side? Yes, yes, yes. Which one you need? So you can do using glide record, you can do using script include. So you can try both the ways. Uh, so today's recording, will you forward me uh, in a separate uh, group? I mean, I'm added in another group, right? So that's why. Uh, or else you will be added to that group. Uh, uh, okay, I, I'll add you on the group. And tomorrow, uh, uh, there is one girl, Dhanlakshmi. Uh, she will actually add you uh, over the group, okay? Share, I, I'm, I'm adding you okay. right away. Okay, okay so okay. So, any other questions, guys? No, it's fine. Okay, guys, we can actually wind up for today and we'll see you tomorrow.